When we think of an atmosphere, first thing we want is a place of joy. And, and an atmosphere will either be a place of joy or it'll be a place of anxiety. After that, we want it to be a place where their affections are caught. All children have their affections taught to them, well, caught. Caught is a better word than taught when it comes to our affections. Our affections are caught from the community that we've identified with. As an adult, I will choose a community, and that community will inform my affections. And 10 years from now, my affections will be profoundly shaped by the community that I've been a part of and identified with. Children don't choose their own community, at least not initially. That's a parental responsibility. So parents, when they choose a school, are choosing not just a place for giving information, but they're choosing, to use another word, a culture that will have profound impact on the shaping of their children. Atmosphere shapes our affections. Why do I want what I want? It's because of the atmosphere that I have breathed in. It's because of the relationships I've had. Ideally, my relationship with God is having the most profound impact on the shaping of my affections. Second, the relationship with the community of others who are like-minded and pursuing the same sorts of thing is shaping my affections. But whatever my relational community is, that will shape my desires, my hopes, my aspirations. That's true for all of us. When we think of the school, we are very, very intentional. What's lifted up? How are the affections being shaped of children? And it's not by lecture. It's, it's by what the teacher admires. Our atmosphere or our culture or our community also tells us how to negotiate life. How do we work? How do we relate to one another? How do we handle conflict? What's acceptable, what's not acceptable? I'll give you an instance. At our schools, we believe there should be a zero tolerance for unkindness. That it is quite simply not acceptable for anyone to be unkind. That does not mean there are not acts of unkindness because we are human and we all fail and sometimes we lose our joy, get into anxiety, become neurotic and act out in ways that are less than helpful. That does happen, even at Ambleside. But the point is, as a community, we're committed to being kind. So what are the norms for how we relate to one another? What are the norms for the way we work? We pay attention to the work at hand. Teachers have that expectation, so that students have that expectation of themselves and students have that expectation of one another. That doesn't mean there aren't times when children's attention drift or they become preoccupied or they didn't sleep well the night before and they're struggling, but it's always engaged lovingly, joyfully. It's good to be me here with you, even if you're having struggles, giving your focused attention. But the point is, focused attention is what we do here. That's the atmosphere, that's the culture. And of course, step into a classroom where nobody's paying attention, except the few that are going for the A's, and the easiest thing is conform to the culture, don't pay attention. Step into a classroom where everyone's paying attention, the easiest thing is to pay attention. The atmosphere always leverages how we will relate to one another, how we'll relate to work, how we'll relate to our world. Another example, is a book worth reading for the pleasure and delight of reading and coming to know more about the human condition? Well, if you step into a classroom where the atmosphere is, I know this is boring, no one's gonna like it, but you have to get it for the test, so come on, let's climb this mountain and uh, we'll get the facts. Here's your, I'll give you worksheets with the important stuff for you to know. Ah, who's going to find any delight? Everyone's just told me. This is like eating sawdust. This is going to be as painful as can be. And students believe it. Okay, books are a pain. They're not worth listening to. They're not worth our time, our attention. On the other hand, walk into a classroom where everybody's interested in what's going to happen next. We've had students tell their parents that what they wanted for Christmas 
was all the books that they were reading in literature and history in school that year. Uh, our teachers often have to tell students, don't read ahead, don't read ahead, because we want to engage this together. We have students at times begging, oh, please, let us read ahead. I want to take it home and finish it. Well, that's a very, very different atmosphere and we breathe it in. Why would a 22 year old hate history? Because I was in an atmosphere where history was held in contempt and not treated as a worthy subject. Why is a 22 year old going to love history? Because I was in an atmosphere where we had these great discussions over these great texts about these fascinating people who lived at other places and other times. That's what the atmosphere is and it has a profound impact on shaping us.